Hi everyone, I'm Miss Perry and I'm going to be with you for the next math lesson. And I've got someone that's going to help me as well. This is Bongo. Say hello Bongo. He's going to be helping out with our maths as well. Bongo knows how well you've been working. So we're going to start off by looking at the practice activity that Mrs Behan gave you in the previous lesson. I wonder how you got on with it. Bongo's had a go at it. We're going to see what he's done. Has he convinced me? Wow, Bongo, you've been working so hard. I'm sure the children have been working just as hard as you have. Let's have a look at what Bongo's done. He's used bananas in his groups to represent the repeated addition and the multiplication expression. I knew you would do. Bananas are his favourite fruit. Let's have a look at what he's done. You can see on the left hand side here, he's got one group of six, two groups of six, and three groups of six bananas. So he's got six plus six plus six. On this side, he's got one group of six, two groups of six, three groups of six bananas. So he's got three times six or three sixes. Well done, Bongo. You've definitely convinced me that six plus six plus six is equal to three times six. I wonder what your pictures look like. Do they look similar to Bongo's? Mrs Behan also asked if you're ready for a challenge. Were you? If you haven't had a go, but you'd like to, pause the video now before we go through it together. Let's have a look. We've been given a repeated addition expression, which is equal to a multiplication expression. So we've got to make the re repeated addition expression and the multiplication expression match. But we've got some missing numbers. How can we work out what the missing numbers are? Well, we know with our repeated addition expression that we're adding equal groups. So we've got four plus something plus four. What's our missing number going to be? That's right, Bongo, it's going to be four. We're adding groups of four. Let's have a look at our multiplication expression. It says we've got three times something. We've got three groups of something. What's up, Bongo? Yes, we've got three groups of four. Let's have a look at our repeated addition expression here. We've got seven plus something plus seven plus seven. What's our missing number going to be? It's going to be seven, isn't it? Because when we're doing a repeated addition, we need to have equal groups. So we've got equal groups of seven. How can we write that as a multiplication expression? We're going to write four times seven because we've got four sevens or four groups of seven. Have a look at this picture. What can you see? Can you choose which multiplication expression correctly represents the picture? Pause the video now and have a think. You can use the stem sentences to help you. Let's have a look together. What can we see? We can see four boats. Each boat represents one group. So there are four groups. How many children are there in each group? We can see three children in each group, so there are four groups of three. Remember, we can also say four threes. We've got one three, two threes, three threes, four threes. As a repeated addition expression, we could write this as three plus three plus three plus three. But today we're going to think more just about the multiplication expression. So how could we write four groups of three or four threes as a multiplication expression? We can write this as four times three. I wonder if you can tell someone at home what each number in the multiplication expression represents. The four represents the number of boats. The three represents the number of children in each boat. So four times three 
is the correct multiplication expression to represent this picture. Now it's your turn. Can you match each picture with the correct multiplication expression? Remember, you can use the stem sentences to help you. Pause the video whilst you have a think. Bongo and I are going to have a think too. Have you had a go? Let's look together. What can we see in the first picture? Bongo thinks that we can see two nests. He's right. So there are two groups. How many eggs are there in each nest? We can see five eggs in each nest. So there are two groups of five or two fives. One five, two fives. And we can write that as two times five. What does each number in our multiplication expression represent? Can you tell someone at home? The two represents the number of nests and the five represents the number of eggs in each nest. Let's have a look at the next picture. This time the groups have been circled. We've got three groups. How many stars are there in each group? What was that Bongo? Bongo says there are five stars in each group. Well done Bongo. So there are three groups of five. Remember we can say there's one five, two fives, three fives. And we can write that as three times five. Can you tell someone at home what each digit in the multiplication expression represents? The three represents the number of groups and the five represents the number of stars in each group. We've been given a multiplication expression and in a moment I'm going to use some objects that I found around my house to represent that multiplication expression. But before I do that, let's have a look at what it says. It says three times four or three fours. I wonder if you can tell someone in your home what each number represents in our multiplication expression. Let's have a look together. What does the three represent? That's right. The three represents the number of groups. What does the four represent? That's right. The four represents the number of objects that we've got in each group. So we've got three groups of four or three fours. Bongo is going to help me represent that multiplication expression using objects. Bongo and I use pasta to represent our multiplication expression. What do you notice about our groups? Can you see that our groups are equal? There are four pieces of pasta in each group. One group of four, two groups of four, three groups of four. Or we can say one four, two fours, three fours. Now it's your turn. I'd like you to go and collect some objects from around your house and represent the following multiplication expression. The first multiplication expression is five times three or five threes. The next multiplication expression is two times two or two twos. See if you can use the objects to represent the multiplication expression. Remember, think about what each number represents in the expression and use the stem sentences to help you explain your groups. Here's what Bongo and I use to represent five times three. We use pasta. What do you notice about our groups? They're equal, aren't they? There's three pieces of pasta in each group. got one group of three, two groups of three, three groups of three, four groups of three, five groups of three, or five times three. Remember, we can also say five threes. This is how Bongo and I represent the second multiplication expression. What do you notice about our groups this time? They're equal, aren't they? There are two pieces of pasta in each group. Let's have a look at our groups and see if we've represented the multiplication expression correctly. 
Here we've got one group of two, and here we've got two groups of two. So we can say we've got two twos, or two times two. I wonder if your objects look similar. Now I'd like you to draw a picture to show six groups of four. There are the stem sentences to help you out. See if you can explain using the stem sentences what your picture represents. Can you write a multiplication expression for your picture too? Pause the video and have a go, and then we'll come back and have a look at what I've done. See if they look similar. Have you had a go? This is the picture that Bongo and I drew to represent six groups of four. We use number block four. Remember, he represents one group of four because he's made up of four blocks. So we've got one four, two fours, three fours, four fours, five fours, six fours, six groups of four, or six times four. We also wrote the multiplication expression to represent our picture. I wonder if your pictures look similar to the one that Bongo and I drew. Now I'd like you to have a look at this picture. We've got some ice creams. Can you complete the multiplication expression to match the picture? Pause the video and have a go. Remember to explain what each of the numbers represents in your multiplication expression. Have you had a go? Let's have a look together then. What can we see in the picture? We can see that we've got six ice cream cones. What's in each of our ice cream cones? We can see that in this ice cream cone that there are three ice cream scoops. And what do you notice about each ice cream cone or each group? They're equal, aren't they? There are three ice cream scoops in each cone. So we've got one group of three, two groups of three, three groups of three, four groups of three, five groups of three, six groups of three, or six threes. How can we write that as a multiplication expression? That's right, we can write six times three. I wonder if you explain to somebody at home what the six represents. It represents the number of groups or the number of ice cream cones. Did you tell someone what the three represents? That's right, it represents the number of ice cream scoops in each cone. Antonella says that she has four threes. Does she? Pause the video and have a think or have a chat with somebody at home about whether you agree with Antonella. Bongo and I are going to have a look at it too. What did you think? Bongo and I didn't agree with Antonella. If we have a look at the picture that she's drawn, we can see that she's got one three, two threes. She definitely doesn't have four threes. What would we have to do to help her to represent four threes? Can you draw a picture to show four threes? Let's have a look at what you've done. So we know that Antonella has two threes at the moment. So we're going to draw another group of three. Now she's got three threes. And we need one more group of three. So now she's got four threes, or four times three. Now it's time for your practice activity. And I'd like you to make your own pair cards. On one card, I'd like you to write a multiplication expression, and on another card, draw a picture to represent that multiplication expression. If you made the cards in a previous lesson with Mrs. Behan, you could use some of the cards that you've made. But remember, this time we don't need the cards that have your repeated addition expression on them. We just need the cards that have the multiplication expression and the pictorial representation. You're getting so good at this now that I bet you want to make some more cards with some different multiplication expressions and pictures on them. You can have a look at the example that Bongo and I made together. I hope you have fun creating your pair cards. You could play Snap.
or a matching game with somebody at home. You've done some brilliant mathematics in this lesson and Bongo and I are really proud of you. We hope to see you soon. Say bye Bongo.